there are five things you will do for the word to begin to come to you in addition to obedience. Number one, ask in prayer. You need to sit down and pray. God, open my understanding. God, open my eyes to behold wondrous things from thy word. Because it is God that will open your eyes to behold wondrous things. There are wonders in the word of God. But if your eyes are not open, you will not see them. Open my eyes that I might behold wondrous things in thy world. And when God opens your eyes, that one verse you knew from primary school, you will open it and see a different thing. And then what you will see will now change your world. Open my eyes. Paul was praying for the church. In Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17, he said, for this cause, I bow down my knees and pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know, and he mentioned three things. Number one, the hope of your calling. Number two, the exceeding greatness of the riches that is in the light for the saints. And number three, he said the exceeding greatness of his power that he wrought when he rose Christ from the dead. So if you don't pray for your eyes to be opened, you may read the Bible and never see power. You may read the Bible and never see favor. You may read the Bible and never see the blessing. So in addition to obedience, we must pray for our understanding to be enlightened, for our spirits to open, to catch the world. Because every word you catch can change your world. What brings enlargement are the proceeding word of God. There are many theologians today who can quote all the verses of the Bible, but they don't catch any rema. Because although they have studied, they are blind. It is when you obey and begin to pray that the word comes to you. Number two, what do you do to catch the word? Fasting. Exodus 34, verse 28 and 29. Moses went to the mountain, and the Bible said he was there 40 days without food or water. And immediately he said, the commandments were given to him. So when a man stays in God's presence, in fasting and prayer, amongst other things, the word comes to him. Why do you think Jesus was operating in the Rema so effortlessly when, when the devil came to him in Matthew chapter 4? If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. That's not the time to go and start reading Genesis to Revelation. The challenges of life, when they confront you, you need instant response from the spirit. But Jesus already knew that he was going to be tempted. Because the Bible said in Matthew 4, 1, the spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted. And because he knew that he cannot start shuffling the world at that time, he went ahead of the devil, fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And when the devil spoke, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Immediately, Deuteronomy 8, 3 opened up. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Every challenge that came, there was a rema. Every challenge that came, there was a rema. Why? He was in fasting. When you sit in the place of fasting, the world comes alive. Number three, kingdom service. If you want the world to come to you, you must be neck deep in kingdom service. You cannot hear any word of knowledge if you don't go out to win souls. Because word of knowledge is not for the bedroom. It's when you go out to win souls that God will tell you, this person is going through an affliction. That's when God will tell you, this person needs a child. That's when God will tell you, this person's ear is not functioning well. So a man who is not serving cannot hear. You will not hear things about children until you are serving in children's ministry. Go to church after this uh, conference and find out people who always say, God told me. You will notice that 80% of the time, what they hear is around the area of their service. A man who is a soul winner will be strong in word of knowledge and healing. A man who is attending to children will be strong in the gift of word of wisdom because he needs to give direction. So service activates dimension. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1, Paul was speaking and he said, we are ministers of Christ, servants of Christ. He said, and because of that, we are stewards of the mysteries of God. So the mysteries of the scripture will not come to you until you are neck deep in service. In our generation today, they beg people to serve. You'll see, not see them. Meanwhile, when you go to the era of the fathers, the way they punish people in church is that they will tell you, you will no longer sweep. So when you want to punish people in church, you'll take responsibility for the, from them. You will no longer be an usher. You will no longer sweep the church. And people will be begging to sweep. 
people will be begging to be ushering. But in our generation, tell somebody, carry this wire from here, chuck here, and we say it's 2,000. And we think we'll be enlarged. That's why we are blind and deaf. There is no service in our quiver. Those days, people beg. You will see somebody buy keyboard. Carry that keyboard to church. Because church does not have keyboard. And he will play it. After service, he will, he will be happy that he brought his keyboard and pray. And play. Today, put keyboard there. Tell somebody, come and pray. He say, um, my charge for two hours is 20,000. And we say we will be big. That's why when you check them, 20 years, they are where they are. Even the ones that have become big, the moment they put money, they start going down. You know what Paul said? 1 Corinthians 9, 18. He said, when I preach the gospel, I did it free of charge. Because it is in service that greatness is born. And one of the technologies of betting greatness is that the more you serve, the more God speaks to you. Those words that come to you is what makes you invincible. Number four, how do you access the world? Is by sustaining meekness. James 1, 21. You will see what the Bible said. When a man becomes meek, the word of God comes to him. He said, the meek shall he teach knowledge. He said, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word. So if there is no meekness, you can't receive the word. The meek shall he teach in knowledge. Shall he teach in judgment. So a man who wants to receive God's word must sustain meekness as a way of life. Number five, how do you get access to the world? By sustaining the fear of the Lord. Mama was talking a moment ago. He said, this is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and obey his commandments. This is a godless generation, fearless generation. People are in church, they are chatting. The Holy Ghost is moving. People are gisting. And then you are wondering, are you okay? Are you not aware that is the king of kings moving? Meanwhile, every day you see these fathers, the moment they come, they kneel down. Show reverence. As big as they are. Bishop David Oedeko said something. He said when he sits down there in service, everybody knows you can't talk to him. Because when God is talking, no man talks. That's fear for God. They tremble at the voice of God. When God rebuked this man, they stop everything. Go for retreat for two weeks, for one month. But our generation, when God speaks, you say, all right, God, I'm coming. We will discuss that matter later. There is something to do. And we want to be big. We are jokers. There's no fear for God. The Bible said in Isaiah 11 verse 2, it said, out of Jesse, he plucked out a root. And he said, upon him is the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of understanding. And he said, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And he said, it shall make him of a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He repeated the fear of the Lord twice. And because of the fear of the Lord, he said, he shall no longer judge after the sight of his eyes or the hearing of his ear. That's what kept him ahead of his generation. The fear of the Lord. Finally, if you want to receive the word of God, you must become sensitive to the Holy Spirit. In John 16, 13, he said, I have many things to tell you. He said, but you cannot receive it. How be it when the spirit of truth is come? He said, it will guide you into all truth. So it is the work of the Spirit to bring you into the operation and the reality of the Word of God. But the problem is, some people grieve the Holy Ghost and some quench the Holy Ghost. You cannot hear the Word from the Holy Spirit if you grieve Him. And you cannot hear the Word from the Holy Ghost if you quench Him. How do you quench the Holy Ghost? By refusing to do what He told you to do. If the Holy Ghost tells you, Give to this person and you don't, you quench him. If he says, go out and win souls and you don't, you quench him. So when you refuse to do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do, you quench him. First Thessalonians 2.19, it says, quench not the spirit. And then you greet the Holy Ghost by not by doing what he says you should not do. Don't fornicate, you are a fornicator. Don't lie, you are a liar. The Holy Ghost will be grieved. And when the Holy Ghost is grieved, or the Holy Ghost is quenched, his oracles are withdrawn from you. That's the problem with many. And this is why we don't have access to the word of God. No matter how big you are, the day you stop hearing God, that day you start dying. The Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 3, from verse 1, it said in those days, the voice of God was cast. And there were no open vision. 
and the evil lamp in the temple had gone out. Although Eli had the reputation of the high priest, but there was nothing happening in Israel until a little boy called Samuel came who knew the fear of God, who was willing to obey God. That was when God started speaking again. So if you are not sensitive to God, you will not hear God's voice. When you start hearing God's voice, then your word begins to enlarge. And the instruments that enlarge your word are wisdom, power, faith, love, understanding. All of those things is as God speaks that they are implanted. When God speaks to you, power comes. When God speaks to you, wisdom comes. Those are the things you write on to enlarge your word. Thank you for watching this video. We trust you have been tremendously blessed. To get more messages by Apostle Michael Oroho, kindly join our Telegram channel by following the link on your screen. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you.